Shalom, shalom, and welcome to Think Thoughts on this weekend's readings. So Jesus is speaking in the temple. That's important to know. And he's talking to the Pharisees, so the people that are the leaders in the temple and supposedly the most important ones that know all the stuff and things. Good times. Um, hello, Lucy. And um, in this reading, he is just he's speaking in parables because the Pharisees have confronted Jesus. And uh, the first, he just finished telling the parable of the prodigal son, which is beautiful. And then he tells the parable of the wicked tenants. So in this one, uh, the landowner representing God creates this um, vineyard and he leases it to these tenants and then goes to another country. And uh, the tenants end up being horrible tenants. And so the landowner sends some slaves to collect the produce. Uh, but the tenants seized his slaves and beat one, killed another, and stoned another. Again, he sent other slaves more than the first, and they treated them in the same way. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him for his inheritance. So they seized him and threw him into the vineyard and killed him. Ba -ba -da -ba. Let's take a look at this and see how much this mirrors life and Jesus' story. So here we're gifted this world and these people and and yet there's so much hatred and there's so much anger and we're gifted each other and, and there's so much killing and beating of each other and, and this obsession of power over and needing to to be the, 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 the ones that control all the things and people are being um, God's people, which is all people, people are being stoned and killed. And so finally God says, oh, I'll send my son. Or the tenant says, I'll send my son. Surely they'll respect my son. But then the tenant saw the son and they kill him. Dum, dum, dum. Sound familiar to Jesus' story? And then the at this point, the Pharisees have not realized that Jesus is actually talking about them. And uh, Jesus, says, or Jesus says, what do we do to the tenants that killed all these people? And the, the tenants say, well, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and lease the vineyard on the other, to other tenants who will give him the produce and the harvest at the harvest time. And it's interesting at this moment, kind of dark humor, that uh, they don't realize Jesus is talking about them. And Jesus basically says, well, what do I do with you? And they say, well, put, put us wretches to miserable death and lease the vineyard to other tenants. A very human way of thinking. Well, they were bad, so let's punish them. Um, and Jesus never, ever gives in to that type of thinking. And Jesus, who is God, um, never lives in that way. Jesus goes all the way to the cross, living, forgiving, love, living a completely di different operating system than what um, so, meant, so much of humanity lives in this idea of tit-for-tat thinking. And, and it's just, it ne that never gives life and that doesn't heal. So <laughs> Jesus says to them, have you ever read this the, in the scriptures, the stone that the builders rejected had become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it is amazing in our eyes. Therefore, I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people that produce the fruits of the kingdom. The one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and it will crush anyone on whom it falls. And it's at this point that the chief priests realize that Jesus is talking about them. But what I want to bring into our, our consciousness right here is that, yeah, when we meet Jesus and Jesus' love and Jesus' inclusion and Jesus' way of being, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, we are broken to pieces. We're broken to pieces because the world that we thought was real of tit-for-tat thinking, this world that we thought was real, of one person deserves this or that or the other thing, the world that we thought was real is broken to pieces. And the parts of us that can hang on to hate and that can hang on to to these, even our own horrible self-talk that can have those, those lies that go, go on repeat in our own head and the ways that we think about other people instead of seeing their pain um, we just we can tend to judge those parts of us get crushed by Jesus's love so the one who falls on this cornerstone will be broken to pieces yeah not in the way that we're used to thinking of it of people being punished but in a way where our egos and and the parts that we thought were so important just fall to the ground and we finally recognize that we are what Jesus proclaimed over and over again we are one we are deeply connected, not one meaning more than another, but 
human beings, humanity, walking with each other through life and holding each other, that that is the kingdom of God. And it is all around us. It's just if we're aware of being able to enter that and to be able to have this cornerstone, the thing that you most struggle with, oddly enough, the thing that we try to run from or reject, ends up being that thing that breaks us to pieces so that we can finally see. And as Leonard Cohen says, those cracks are where the lights get in. Grace and peace, friends.